HET 194 Nate Preparation Week 7 and 8 Heat and Matter. The objective of this week's assignment would help the HVAC refrigeration learner to understand how to identify the ways heat is transferred into HVAC systems, describe the different states of matter, discuss the types of heat, explain the meaning of BTU, discuss thermodynamics, and describe what is temperature. A central purpose of the HVAC technician in reference to his or her work duties is to provide a comfortable condition space for the customer. Conditioned air means that you can or are concerned with and not only with the temperature but also with the humidity, filtration, ventilation, of course, the primary goal in providing comfort is usually to maintain a desirable temperature. Heat can be produced by many types of heating systems such as electric heat elements, heat pumps, or by gas or oil heating units. Cooling the air, or better stated, removing heat from the air, in the past was done by non-mechanical ways. The modern air conditioner is a mechanical system that depends on the change state of refrigerant to absorb the large quantities of heat energy. This week vocabulary will include element, compounds, heat, BTUs, thermodynamics, conduction, convection, sensible heat, specific heat, subcooled, superheated, latent heat, change of state, and radiation. Identify the ways heat is transferred in a HVAC system. Basically we look at heat and we the question is basically what is heat? And to explain simply heat is a measurement of quantity of energy. When there's molecules moving, which is the smallest part of an element, it moves and it friction of molecules rubbing against each other generate friction and friction will generate heat from the motion. So you can say that the faster the motion of molecules, the more heat it will uh, generate. Therefore, if you slow down the molecules, the, uh, the lower amount of heat energy is produced. So heat is a measurement or heat is basically energy or we could say even kinetic energy which is energy in motion. If it's doing work it is generating some type of heat. It may be doing other things too such as electricity if it turns a motor the motor will do work of course by moving whatever object uh, is trying to turn like a blower motor or uh, some type of other type of motor to turn and other things, but one of the uh, byproducts from the motion is also heat energy. So how does heat move? And the term thermodynamics is the study of heat energy. Mo heat is one of the things, here's the definition of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is state that you cannot create or destroy heat, but we only can cause heat to transfer from one state to another or just, or basically be transferred. So in other words, we can take energy, we cannot create energy or destroy energy, but we can transfer energy from one form to another. So heat will always, this is the second law of thermodynamics, which says that uh, heat will always travel from a warm source to a cooler source. And in this cooler source is that heat goes from uh, something that's warm, like a cup of coffee, into the air. And until all the heat is balanced through an equilibrium, till the air temperature and the coffee temperature is the same. Here's another example of a house. In the wintertime and summertime. In the wintertime, the house should be warmer than outdoor temperature. So 
the heat from inside a house will travel through the walls and windows and doors to outdoors. However, in the uh, summertime, just the opposite would happen. We try to condition the house, so the house normally would be cooler on the inside than is outdoors on a hot summer day. So in that case, the heat from outdoors would try to travel through the walls and doors and windows into the house. So that is uh, what we say how heat moves. Also heat because like air, uh, it can heat air up and the heat will travel upward. It will rise because what it would do, it will heat the air and, and the warm air become less dense than the air around it. And so it will rise and while the, the cooler air will drop. So heat will always go from warm source to the cool, cooler source and it will rise if the, the temperature around it is surrounding it is uh, at a lower temperature. So how heat transfer is as long as there a temperature difference, temperature difference going from, like I said, in the wintertime where it's warmer inside the house compared to the temperature outdoors, the heat will travel, uh, and there is a temperature difference, because let's say it's 75 degrees inside of a house, and it's zero degrees outdoors, there's a 75 degree temperature difference. So therefore, the heat will travel very quickly compared to uh, the summertime, where it might be 75 degrees in the house and 95 degrees outdoors, and there's only a 20 degree temperature difference. And that lower temperature difference will cause heat to leave the house at a slower rate. So what are the types of heat? Basically, there are two types of heat. Sensible heat, which is heat that we can measure with a thermometer. And there's latent heat. is the type of heat we cannot measure with a thermometer, but is the heat that will change the state of the substance or matter. So going to the, uh, the states of matter, basically there are three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Actually, there's more than just uh, three, but basically what we deal with on a normal basis, and we can see this happening uh, in, um, in nature, is Water can be a solid by removing heat from it, and it will turn into ice. And if we add heat to it from ice, it will turn into a liquid, which is water. And then we add additional amounts of heat. It could go from a liquid into a gas, which is steam. So basically, we'll see most um, substances can be in those three states based on the amount of energy that is contained in it by removing heat or adding heat to it, you can change its state. So that goes back to latent heat again. Latent heat is the amount of energy that you can add or take away from a substance to cause it to change state. So this leads into temperature. We talked about heat energy, and when we look at heat energy, a lot of times we talk about the capacity of heat, the amount of energy that is there. But when we look at temperature, temperature is the measurement of its heat intensity. And to explain an uh, example of heat intensity is that how much that is concentrated in a certain area. So if, let's say we take a 100 watt light bulb and let's say we turn it on, the light bulb surface become maybe around 200 degrees, very hot, it could burn you if you touch it. However, the, the amount of energy coming from that light bulb, it might be something around 340 BTUs. And the, uh, BTUs is a measurement of heat energy, of the capacity of heat energy. But that same light bulb, that same 100 watt light bulb, if you took a temperature at the filament, the filament is that very small wire inside of the light bulb that is glowing very brightly. It's a very small 
tungsten metal and it is uh, very thin have resistance in it and is glowing very brightly and but the temperature of it now is the same amount of energy coming from that the energy is still 340 BTUs but the temperature of it since it's concentrated in that very small uh, element that uh, that tungsten uh, filament may be well over a thousand degrees compared to the surface of the bulb which is only 200 degrees that's because it's farther away from the source the source of that heat energy and light energy is the the filament while as it spreads out it loses some of its intensity so the amount of heat coming from the light bulb is still the same it hasn't changed it's still 340 um, BTUs while the intensity of that filament is very high because it concentrates in a very small area. So basically when we take a thermometer and get a reading, we're not reading energy, but we are reading its intensity. This goes back to what we discussed already is the types of heat. And remember again, heat is measurement of its energy. And sensible heat is the amount of heat that we can measure uh, with a thermometer, while latent heat is the amount of heat that will change the state of the substance without changing its temperature. Latent heat uh, can be broken down into three different uh, categories, like latent heat of fusion, which is uh, water turning into ice, and it is uh, freezing, and it's changed state from a liquid to a solid. There is latent heat of condensation, which is taking a vapor and turning it back into a liquid. And latent heat of vaporization, which is taking a liquid, adding heat to it, and causing it to turn into a gas, a vapor. So these are the different types of latent heat. And each one of these uh, areas of latent heat there is not a change in temperature. It will reach a certain point, maintain that temperature, but it will change state. Once it changes state, then it can change this temperature. But once it's in that one point, like the freezing point of water is 32 degrees. While it's freezing, it will not change from 32 degrees, but you could turn that water into ice at 32 degrees. So therefore you can have both water at 32 degrees and you can have ice at 32 degrees. And it's really based on the amount of heat energy that you're taking from that water to change its state. So we talk about BTUs. BTU stands for British Thermal Unit. And a British Thermal Unit is a measurement of heat energy. The definition for a BTU, it is the amount of heat energy that is needed to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So in other words, if you take a pound of water and you increase or decrease that temperature one degree, basically you are changing uh, it by one BTU. And that leads into another definition which, which is sensible heat. And sensible heat, or it's specific heat and more specifically, it's specific heat is the amount of energy it takes to raise one pound of a substance, not water, but any substance, by one degree Fahrenheit. And we use that uh, as a basis to figure out the amount of energy any substance can obtain. And basically we base that on against water. So in other words, that anything that has a a specific heat of one is equal to water, but if it's less, the number is less than one, of course, it cannot retain the same amount of heat as water, but if it's, the number is over one, of course, it can retain more heat per pound than water can. That is its specific heat. Any substance and all substance will have a specific heat. So there's different types of heat. We kind of briefly went over uh, Heat in the wintertime and heat in the uh, summertime. 
Heat in the wintertime we call heat loss because we're losing heat from inside of a structure to outside. That also goes for refrigeration too. If you have a walk-in cooler or a reach-in cooler box, since it's colder inside than outside of it, we will lose heat to the outdoors. Heat gain is when we're uh, picking up heat, gaining heat from outside of the structure to the inside. And of course, heating or refrigeration systems, uh, heating will add heat to inside the structure and refrigeration systems will remove heat from inside the structure. So to summarize this uh, week's assignment, heat will always travel from a warm to cold source. Temperature is the measurement of the intensity of heat energy. A bridge's thermal unit is the measurement of the capacity of heat energy. And thermodynamics is the study of heat energy.